Good afternoon and welcome to this viewing room celebrating the 40th anniversary of the St. Jude Run. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Heather Placo. I'm the Programs Manager with the Peoria Riverfront Museum. Today I'm joined by survivors and leaders of the organization Amy Jones, Spencer Swearingen, and Sheriff Mike D. McCoy, as well as Molly Shepardson. I'd like to invite you all to ask questions throughout the talk in the comments section below, and we'll be sure to answer those at the end of the presentation. Now I would like to welcome and turn it over to Amy, Spencer, Molly, and Mike for today's program. And we look forward to a really wonderful conversation. Hey, uh, thanks, Heather. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. Thank you to you and John the Museum for, for allowing us this opportunity. You know, the, the run is a special place in my heart and the hearts of the other people that are here today, but also to a lot of people in the community. And so in 1980, as we were sitting around, a friend of mine, Gene Pratt, and I watching people run laps at Landmark, we thought there ought to be a better way to raise money for St. Jude than just running around a health club. So we came up with the idea of running from uh, Peoria to Memphis and back. And uh, we thought that was a pretty cool idea. And then uh, we looked at a map and it was, that would be a thousand miles. And all of a sudden we realized that was really a stupid idea. We weren't going to do that. So we changed it to driving to Memphis and running back. And so, uh, you know, in 1982, 19 of us, uh, we put, well, first of all, I should say, we put an ad in the paper asking if people wanted to join us. And they, uh, 19 people responded. So there were 19 of us that took off the first year and um, drove to Memphis and uh, really got to see the inside of what goes on at St. Jude and what a great place it is and what an important thing we were really doing that even that first year. And you know, when we were down there the first year, a, a couple things really happened that were pretty cool, you know, uh, especially with, with Spencer on here with, with his daughter Tess, you know. Um, one of the questions I asked the tour guide who was a guy named Dr. Gary Dahl said, Gary, um, you know, how long will it be before we'll have a patient that'll be able to run from, you know, uh, Memphis back to Peoria with us? And he said, you know, uh, you'll never see it in your lifetime. It'll, it'll never happen. The, the research is too slow for that to happen. And, you know, that sort of stuck with me. That was uh, an important thing to me. And then, you know, uh, the runs started. And, uh, you know, the first year it was, it was a real learning experience. Um, it was, it was a, a tough 465 miles to, to get home. Um, we made it with a, a lot of changes and we made $22,500, I think, total, which was back in 1982, that was a lot of money for a fundraiser and we were all pretty excited about it. And since then we've had some uh, groups, a group from Galesburg came on board and said, you know, we can't run to Memphis, but we'd like to run with you. And so we uh, formed the auxiliary runs. And so uh, Galesburg's been around the longest and now we have 35 runs total that run from uh, different cities uh, throughout Illinois, Chicago and St. Louis. And they all run into Peoria on the evening or the afternoon of the telethon to raise money for St. Jude. And you know, for me, it has been just a, a great experience. It, it's something that has enriched me as a person I think, and also has, has helped me understand the need there is out there to do this. You know, St. Jude um, is the number one pediatric cancer hospital for children in the world. And what they do and, and the research they put together is, is unbelievable. And, and so we know that the money we raise is going to the right place. And, and um, it's, uh, it's really exciting. The, the run is exciting. It's, it's not an easy event. You know, four days in a motorhome with 90 of your closest friends can, can be a little bit of fun. Um, but, but everybody puts in their miles. And, you know, we always talk about the, the run. Um, the running is the, the easy part, I think, of this. It's the four days with uh, zero or very little sleep that, that takes its toll, I think, even actually more than the running does, because as people like me get older, the, the miles get less, and uh, they get to be a little longer. Miles that I thought were short, you know, 40 years ago, all of a sudden seem, seem pretty long. Um, but we're really excited uh, that this year is, is going to be here and going to happen. 
you know, and, and it's good to have good people like Amy Jones and Spencer Swearingen to go along on the run and, and do their part too. And they have their own stories. And, you know, I guess now would be a good time for me to turn over to Spencer and have Spencer tell his story and about my relationship with his daughter. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I totally, totally understand what you mean. Um, hi, guys. I'm Spencer Swearingen, and uh, I've been on the uh, the Memphis to Peoria run team. Uh, this will be my 12th year. And and like Mike said, it's it's been going on for, for 40 years now. Um, and and like many of you, I, I lived in central Illinois and, and had – uh, the the St. Jude affiliate and this run running through uh, our town many many years and 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 I didn't really uh, appreciate the significance of it or or the meaning of it or or the impact it would have um, um, and and so I'm, I'm uh, story has changed quite a bit you know as I'm as I'm standing here today um, our our my journey with the run and really my my journey with St. Jude starts back in in late 2008. Um, my wife and I, we had, had four young kids. I think they were four, they were all under five years old. Uh, so it was super busy. <laughs> um, and, and they had just come back from a, a family vacation. Uh, uh, and, and our, our second daughter, Tess, who was three at the time, almost four, um, just really did not recover. Uh, was kind of, you know, stayed tired, you know, even after we got home from Disney World. Uh, so we started doing some tests and we're thankful for the Peoria affiliate, uh, uh, St. Jude affiliate here uh, in our town. Um, uh, and, and if you can just imagine, you know, test after test after test and, and really no results until we're standing in front of the doors of St. Jude there in, in Peoria. Um, and, and we're able to, to get some clarity on, on her diagnosis and, and it was not good. She had stage four um, high-risk neuroblastoma. Um, the survival rates were not that good at the time. I think um, what we were working with was a, about a 25% uh, prognosis. Um, we were super thankful for, for St. Jude, and, and I think through our general awareness of, of you know, that organization at the time, there was no question that, that if, if our daughter was going to be saved, it was, it was working with them. And so through our... our um, uh, journey in 2009, we spent a lot of time in Memphis. We were thankfully able to spend some time in the, um, the Peoria affiliate as well um, and, and um, experienced uh, instantly, you know, the, the hope that, that, uh, um, that, if, that she was in the very best place this world could offer, um, you know, to, to, to partner with and, and to treat her. Um, we were blessed with, with some, some big breakthroughs in, in neuroblastoma research and treatment. Um, uh, and so the prognosis rates since, since then have, have gone up quite a bit and we were able to, 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 to benefit from some of those breakthroughs. Um, a year and a half later, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of chemotherapy and, and transplants and radiation. Uh, Tess is 16 years old now and she's uh, got her driver's license and a job and is in high school and is a first year Memphis to Peoria runner this year. So we're super thankful um, for, um, you know, this is, the runs are a big deal, right? And, it, and it's, it's all supporting the same mission and that's giving families like mine hope um, and in, in a, a brighter future in our most desperate need. And so uh, the run is uh, really special for me uh, because you know, when you when you think about the the uh, the guys that started it and the consistency and the dedication that they've had, I, I joke with Mike. I'm I'm just over 40 years old. You've been running as long as I've been alive, almost to save my daughter's life. That that you know, and uh, and Mike is is really uh, uh, you know the, the relationship that that uh, I mean he just loves these kids and and uh, uh, Tess is no different and and so. She's a bit, he's a big reason that, that Tess is really encouraged to, uh, to do this. So, um, so we're just really thankful for that. Um, so um, Amy Jones gives us a, a lot of, uh, um, you know, example, an example to look at, you know, as, as uh, 
you know, has a, has a very similar story that Tessa's starting. And so she encourages uh, Tess a lot. And we're looking forward to um, continuing to help as, as long as we need um, for another 40 years if that's needed. So, Amy, you always tell a way better story than I do. So go ahead. No, I can't. I, everybody's story is so important, so special. And, you know, I love you and Tess so much. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, my, my story is slightly different. It's a little bit longer. Um, my story with St. Jude goes back 33 years. So I was actually a patient. I was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia in 1988 and kind of began my St. Jude journey. Um, was diagnosed here in the Peoria area, sent to Memphis and proceeded to have you know, two and a half years of chemotherapy and treatment and trips back and forth to Memphis. And of course, over that time and being part of this community, I knew who the runners were. I had met some, thought they were all a little crazy, um, but just kind of fell in love with them like, like just the whole Peoria community has. And I had a really good friend um, who was the same age I was. We had the same diagnosis and he loved the runners as much as I did. And so he said, okay, we're going to make a pact. When we are old enough, we are healthy enough, we are going to do this run together. And I remember looking at him thinking, you're crazy. Running was about as bad as chemo in my book. Kind of still is, not going to lie, really don't enjoy it. Um, but I thought, you know what, these crazy people are running for us. They don't even know us. If they can do it, then we can do it too. So we made this pact that we were going to do this run together. Um, but unfortunately, a few months after we made that pact, he passed away. So here I was kind of by myself thinking, does this mean I still have to run? <laughs> um, and unfortunately, uh, a few years after that pact and thinking I was gonna be healthy enough and old enough to join the run, I relapsed and thought, okay, what does this mean for my life? But those runners kept going every single year, kept encouraging us, kept supporting us, um, just really kept motivating us that, you know, we had to get better, all of the patients and that the ones who weren't able to to run who had passed away like that their life still meant something and so I remember being 16 years old and told Mike McCoy okay I have to go on this run and he sits I remember him looking at me saying you're still on chemo there's no way and I'm like 16 of course at that time was the age you could go and I was like I am going on this run I have to do it and I think he realized that it was it was a bigger thing than just me going. It was me going for Dusty. It was me kind of saying, forget cancer, I gotta do this. So he allowed me to go, I think begrudgingly maybe a little bit, but um, he allowed me to go and he put me in a motor home with the Jones boys and told me that they would take care of me. Um, Gene had been running for three or four years at that point, and his son Ryan um, was on his second year, and so they would show me the ropes and take care of me. And so I proceeded to be um, kind of tag along for a couple of years um, on the run, or a couple of days on the run that year. And the Jones boys took care of me. And fast forward a, a couple of years, and I was actually strong enough and old enough and healthy enough to be an actual runner. And so in um, 1994, I started running. And I joke that I am not a runner. I do this run. Um, but, you know, I, I did it because I owed it to Dusty, because I knew that he would never get the chance to run. And if I was able to, that I had to get out there and do it. And I think over the years, I still run for him. But I run for patients like Tess to show them that they can do it too, um, to hopefully inspire them, that you don't have to be fast, you don't have to be good, you just have to do it. Um, and I continue to run to kind of let the runners know that what they're doing is making a difference and that I'm honored and privileged to be a part of this group. And now, all these years later, 24 years later of running, um, 
and being a wife to that Jones boy that Mike introduced me to all those years ago, um, and a mother to our two amazing kiddos, I kind of continue to run to hopefully show them that anything's possible. And with St. Jude, miracles are happening every day and every single patient deserves the same opportunity. And so that's why we keep doing what we're doing and why everybody's support and just having so many runs in an entire community that rallies around St. Jude in such a momentous way is making a difference and it is changing lives. And I am an example of that. Tess is an example of that. And every single patient deserves that. So that's ultimately why we're here. So Molly can probably explain a little bit more of all the logistics of everything that goes on and her dedication to keeping these runs going. Gosh, you guys, I pulled the ed short end of the stick having to go after three of the best and most inspiring stories on the run. So Heather, I like have to blame you for that. But hi, everyone. Um, my name is Molly and I work for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, ALSAC. And so that's the fundraising organization um, that raises money all over the country for St. Jude so that no family will ever receive a bill. So I know um, Amy and Spencer both know they never received a bill from St. Jude, not for treatment, travel, housing, or food. And it's for people in our community, everyone across central Illinois and Iowa, the country and the world that gives to St. Jude. And that's my favorite thing about St. Jude um, to really, so that these families can help their kids live. And, and that's very, very important to us. So um, thank you again, Heather, for having us. Um, I work at the LSAC office. I have for nine and a half years and the last five have been um, working primarily on the runs. And um, it's the privilege of my life. Um, I love my job and I love supporting and working um, with volunteers like these three. And um, what Amy didn't tell you is she also works for ALSAC as well. So she is um, a coworker of mine and um, Central and Southern Illinois are lucky to have the affiliate here. And um, we're actually gearing up to head to Memphis. Um, Mike will tell you, we go to Memphis. It's like our home away from home, sometimes up to once a month. And we have not been there in over a year. So we're really excited to head back to Memphis next week. Um, the countdown is on, but um, there's also 35 satellites that are gearing up to participate and 2000 participants that are going to be hitting the pavement next Thursday, uh, Friday and Saturday. And we're thankful for all of those people that that joined the St. Jude runs. Um, they all have fundraising commitments. Mike will tell you it is a fundraising event, not a running event. And I think that's Amy's favorite part of it is um, it is about the fundraising and, and we ask everyone to raise money, but the loyalty of this community is absolutely amazing. And the money that is raised for St. Jude um, is not lost on us. We're so thankful for all of the sponsors who make this happen, the donors that make that happen. And I'm very thankful for all the participants who make this happen. And three of the best are on this um, video today. And, and we're just very thankful for them. So um, to all of the people um, that have been hitting, hitting the fundraising hard, there's still time. So stjuderuns.org is where you can start if you're new to us. Um, that's our website that tells you what communities will be in on July 17th, what communities are involved in the run. And, um, you know, Mike, he starts, well, he, this is a year round thing for all of these, this group of people who sit on the St. Jude Runners, Asso Runners Association board. But we really, um, it's crazy to look at the calendar and they go get motor homes this weekend. They prep them all weekend. They move them on Monday. They pack them up on Tuesday and head to Memphis. But this year, um, for the first time in 40 years, there's a whole nother component. There's a lot of people who are going to stay in their communities. And, and it warms my heart to see all the collaboration with all of the runners this year and um, all the people who are going to be in their communities. Um, you know, usually like Spencer's gotten involved with the Metamora run and, and usually Metamora runs from Metamora to Peoria, but this year Metamora is staying in a community like a lot of the other satellites and, and giving some community proud. And so I'm excited to, to see um, all of these events, our coordinators, there's 98 of them who work year round 
on their runs in their communities. And without them, I, they're an extension of our staff. Um, they're our St. Jude family and they work so hard to put on these events. So we're so thankful for all of them. And um, there's a lot of patient families in our communities and um, we rally behind the past, present and future ones. And, and um, definitely gives us hope, but we're really excited for the telethon. It's going to look a little um, more like usual this year. You can tune in on WEEK 25 um, on the 17th. We're going to kick off at 630 and go till 10. So we're excited to have the VIPs back and they're hardworking and raising money um, for the telethon and um, and the runs will be making their check presentations. It definitely, it's like Christmas to us. I know we all talk about like going, sending out our letters and going to the mailbox and receiving. I know um, Mike always tells me he's excited when the mailman comes because he gets um, his, his pledges. And, and that's what this St. Jude Runs Month is all about. But my favorite thing is Saturday, um, the 17th. It's usually the first weekend in August, but because of the Olympics, we are on um Saturday, July 17th, and, and to see all of um, the runs come together in the communities and, and all these coordinators make their pledges, it, it definitely warms my heart, and I'm really excited to, it's like all the hard work has paid off, and, and all the hours and meetings, um, it's, it's a cumulative total and what our community definitely rallies behind, so stjuderuns.org is where you can go check it out. Definitely watch the telethon, especially if you mm -hmm. never have. It's going to be really great. And something new this year, um, we're not able to have the thousands mm -hmm. of people back into the Peoria Civic Center like we have in past years and, and what has been tradition. So we have a celebration experience. I'm going to share my screen if you don't mind, just to show you. Um, it is going to be down on Water Street, and we're going to try to bring a little taste of um, normal back. So um, from 3 to midnight on the 17th, so next Saturday, there's going to be a host of things to do once you get to Peoria. Or if you're not, um, if you're from here or not from here, check out downtown. Um, there's going to be live music at Kelleher's from 3 to midnight. We're very excited um, for the... Uh, a mural that's going to be downtown. It's going to be in the Kelleher's parking lot. Um, the St. Jude store is making its debut back. So Amy, we're really excited for all the hard work you've done, but um, at Kelleher's and there'll be signs down there how to get to the St. Jude store. It opens at three and they're only going to be open until as long as they have merchandise left to sell, but we'll probably wrap that up by nine. So get down there early to get all your St. Jude uh, merchandise and swag. Um, the museum is also on our list, so we're very thankful. Thank you again, Heather. And those of you who do not know, there is Michael D. McCoy Way down by <laughs> City Hall, a, kind of adjacent from Sacred Heart Catholic Church is Michael D. McCoy Way. So um, that was one of our kickoffs to the 40th anniversary to celebrate Mike and all he has done for the 40th. Um, I don't think anyone knows how many hours he actually spends on this run. I talk to him multiple times every day and he has a full-time job and a wonderful family and he still um, spends countless hours working on this. So Mike, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for what you, the legacy that you have built. Um, we're very thankful for you. It's like our public forum to tell you this, we would not be here without you. Um, we would not, you brought so much joy and happiness and hope to so many people. So thank you. Happy 40th year. You guys enjoy this year. Um, it's the 40th anniversary and um, our office is very thankful and proud of you. And we're so excited for the next few, um, the next week, I guess we're not, it's not weeks anymore. It's weeks. So we're down, we're down to that. And Heather, I'll send you the map. So maybe you can help us post that something with technical difficulties Absolutely. on my end. But no worries. We can definitely we would love that. That. And here at the museum, of course, we're privileged to be celebrating the milestone with St. Jude of the 40th anniversary run and the achievements with a focused exhibition case display in the museum lobby with some very cool artifacts from Mr. Mike McCoy himself, Sheriff Mike McCoy, uh, that he has given on temporary loan. So please come to the museum lobby. Um, 
just before the end of July. So you can see um, the celebration and the story displayed there. That's some really cool things you have in there, uh, Heather. You and John have done a great job putting it together with your staff. You know, the, I didn't know it, but somebody found the very first list of 1982 of all the runners and the money that we raised. And, um, the, you know, there's a pin in there and some uh, really interesting stuff. And I just encourage people to to stop by and and. Um, uh, our little part of it, our community part, is nothing compared to how cool the museum really is. People need to go visit the museum. That is an unbelievable place. It's a gem that Peoria has. And I just want to say about, you know, those three people below me, you know, Molly, all the work she puts in is unbelievable. But Amy Jones is sort of a quiet person. She doesn't really tell you that she was Miss Heart of Illinois after all her cancer treatment and, and everything else that she did. And Spencer didn't tell you that he came along as a treasurer a year and a half or so ago and has completely redone the finances for the run and made us a much more professional and, and, and dedicated organization than we've ever been. And so the work that everybody puts in is, is pretty cool. And um, I'm excited about the 40th year. Um, you know, it, it's, it's going to be fun. Um, the work, the having some people run virtual and some people go to Memphis has been unbelievable for Julie Whitty and Molly and, and Gene and the staff. It's, it's crazy. And then everything that you guys have done at the museum to call attention to it is, is just icing on the cake. And we really appreciate it. Of course. Well, we are happy to be a part of it. And we have a question from the Facebook comments, if you guys would like to take turns answering it for me. Um, Gina would like to know, oh, sorry, not Gina. Bridget would like to know, uh, what are you most looking forward to on this year's run? Um, I'm looking forward to running across the bridge and getting into the parking lot. <laughs> and uh, I think then after we get back, I, I the, the most exciting thing for me is adding up the money and being able to tell people how much work all these people have put into it. I think that's the most part for me, the most fun part is, is uh, being able to know that all the hard work that these 2,000 people are going to do are going to save kids' lives. That's a big deal. For me, I would say it's the community aspect of it. Our family personally was impacted positively by this community, by the St. Jude community. Um, for the past 12 years, my family's uh, grown uh, to, to love this endearing St. Jude Runs community. Um, the, the ability to, to interact with people and say thank you and, and tell our story and, and draw more people in <clears throat> and maybe influence them so they're not, you know, uh, like I was before we went to Memphis, right? And say, oh yeah, St. Jude's over there. Uh, but really to share the story and the hope that it provides. Um, that's what I'm looking forward to is, is just celebrating, being able to share uh, and, and continue to give back. Um, I'm looking forward to, um, being able to see my family because truly these runners, St. Jude has become a second family for all of us. And to be able to see them and um, celebrate with them. And like Spencer said, to be able to look them in the eye and say, thank you. Thank you for this amazing life that I have and this amazing life that so many other people have. Um, that's my favorite thing that I get to do. Certainly not running, but getting to say thank you. <laughs> I am looking to, forward to three o'clock on Saturday. It's when the first run will come into Peoria and all the satellites um, that are running traditional will be in from three to 5 p.m. And then there's a special place in my heart for that 6 p.m. When, when you hear the Peoria city and county sirens and the Memphis runners run over the bridge. I think there's nothing like that. So I'm, I'm very excited to welcome them all home safely. And then my second favorite is when the telethon starts and we start presenting checks. So that's my two favorites. Wonderful, those are all great, great things to be thankful for and look forward to. Um, and then we have one more question. Gina would like to know, uh, what's your all time favorite Memphis to Peoria run memory? Either fun or inspiring. 
Um, I can go first. I think the best memory is for me is the that every it's a it's a memory that comes every year, and that is to see the former patients that get to run because you know um, I'm not gone yet, and they said it wouldn't happen. So uh, that that's the memory I remember. Um, you know, Doctor Dahl saying that, and my memory is seeing all the former patients line up to go every year. Um, my favorite part of um, our memory of the run uh, has to be actually before I started running uh, when Mike match make, was matchmaker for, um, for me, um, putting me with those Jones boys and ultimately being married for um, 17, almost 18 years to one of those Jones boys. Well, Mike, I thought you were going to, you get like five, we all get one, you get like five or 10, but uh, um, I, th that's a great question. Um, there's so many good positive memories that are just, you know, you just remember forever. Um, when I, when I heard the question, I guess my first thought was um, the, the very first year um, Tess had just gotten done with uh, uh, everything and was cured uh, or, or was in remission. Um, the memory is after the third or fourth run segment, me just sitting on a guardrail on some bridge in somewhere in Kentucky, uh, recognizing that this, that part of the road and, and the right hand shoulder of Route 51 all the way from Memphis up to, to Bloomington. And then we come over on 150 and I was sitting on some, some guardrail there. And, um, they just kind of, uh, hit me how many footprints have been on that right hand shoulder of that road uh, for so many years to, to uh, with all of their donors to raise money for, you know, for me, it was my family, right? And um, we were in the clear and it was just so profound that now I'm, I'm part of that. So that's, that's a pretty cool memory. Well, Mike, let me go on half of the run, the Memphis run one time, because <laughs> it's really hard to send them off and then get back to support all the satellites. So I had to see what it was all about. So I got to be in Mike's motorhome for um, a few hours and I got to be in Spencer's motorhome for a few hours. And you know what, it changed my life and I will support St. Jude for the rest of my life. And And these people have become my family. I, I'm the St. Jude employee, but these people know my life and my kids and my family and have become my close friends. And um, so my, and I, I love sending them off. They get to run through campus. They, my background, they leave, they run through the campus, leave those gates and don't stop running till we welcome them back at six o'clock that Saturday. And um, the memories made inspires me. And I love the social media and hearing all on seeing all the pictures. Um, definitely fills our buckets to know why we're doing what we're doing. So thanks. Oh, well, you all are so inspiring and thank you all for joining me today. Um, and thanks everyone on Facebook or wherever you're watching uh, for joining us for this afternoon's program. A quick reminder though, that if you haven't gotten a chance to see the display in the museum lobby of the 40th anniversary of the St. Jude run, it's on display to the end of July please, please, please go see it. It's very, very special. Um, seeing that, what Mike was talking about, that one page with those 18 picture or 18 signatures on it, it's really powerful to know how much it's grown. That's really the impactful part for me, um, knowing how much of a commitment this is for people for their whole lives. So um, Molly, Mike, would you like to say anything else? I just want to just thank you guys at the museum for allowing us to do this and, and Molly and Amy and Spencer for being a part of it too. It's a, it's a special year for me. And I think it's a special year for a lot of people. You know, it's, um, it, it was hard going into COVID, but it's been hard coming out of COVID for what we do. Uh, and the, the staff that works uh, very hard every day to make this uh, uh, a successful event should be congratulated. They, they are, they're just heroes in my book. There's still time to donate. So, so go to stjuderuns.org and there's a list of all of the runs and you can find their fundraising links. So thanks for all of your support. Wonderful.
Well, a special thank you also to our museum members and our Visionary Society members who make programs like this possible to welcome St. Jude with us today. And also thanks to St. Jude and the program participants, uh, Molly Shepherdson, Amy Jones, Spencer Swearingen, and Sheriff Mike McCoy for taking the time to share their very special and personal stories with our community. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I hope to see you soon at the museum or out on Water Street celebrating St. Jude. And thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.